Siraj, 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 Raval. Guys, this kind of sucks. I don't want to make this video. Um, I'm actually serious. I like Siraj Raval, and I've liked his videos. I've enjoyed some of his videos in the past. If you don't know, he's a machine learning guy. Hello world, it's Siraj. And it's not just a couple of industries that machine learning is affecting. It's every single industry. But he stepped into the fake guru house when he made a $200 course that misled people, which we will get into in a second. So unfortunately, I cannot, just because I like somebody, not do a video on him when I'm trying to educate consumers um, about future choices. So unfortunately, I have to do this video. Let me say first that as someone in the educational space who's made an oopsie before, Ooh. I get it, okay? <laughs> and and kind of have a firsthand understanding of people making mistakes, you know, learning from it, growing from it. But there have been some people alleging that in Siraj's case, this is not a one-off problem. This is not a one-time oopsie. This is sort of a pattern of behavior. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. That I will leave up to you guys. I am just going to cover the facts of the case. And we're gonna talk about um, some of the larger problems that people have brought up. This is with the intent of educating you because this is not Siraj's first course. So I cannot uh, just let this go because there's probably gonna be a course in the future. And when there is, and when there's another Siraj Raval course, I want you to be educated. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Here's the course that Siraj Raval pitched. So I've decided to make the highest value course I possibly could called Make Money with Machine Learning. Now, there's a lot here that's sort of a problem, but the biggest thing is uh, he says that he was gonna limit his course to 500 students in order to give them personalized instruction. And I'm only accepting 500 students so that I can give each of them personalized education and guidance. And everything was going fine until people started to notice there were messages going on, there were workspace invites that didn't make sense. So people did a little digging around and they found out, and by the way, this is a Registrar article which kind of sums up the whole situation in better detail than I will. Um, they found out that there were two separate workspaces that Siraj had set up. Um, one of them had 770 students, one of them had 500 students. And essentially Siraj had been duplicitous about his stopping the course at 500 students because he was gonna keep it all personal and whatever and give them personalized instruction. And I'm only accepting 500 students. And uh, he got a little got a little greedy and decided to keep letting people in the course. And when he did, um, he tried to basically lie about it and keep it from everyone from knowing by creating two separate Slack groups that didn't have any idea of their the other person's existence. Uh, long story short, everyone finds out, everyone gets pretty upset, and they start realizing that Siraj is not giving the personalized experience that a lot of them are wanting. So at this point, people are pretty pissed off, and they start to look around and maybe say, okay, well, we kind of need a refund. And this is kind of where it goes south. Okay, so the first thing that happens is everyone gets moved to Discord because allegedly Siraj didn't want to pay for the Slack uh, like fee of setting up a professional Slack. So once it got to the message limit, he moved everyone over to Discord. And when he did, people started mentioning the word refund for a lot of reasons, because a lot of them said, you know, the course wasn't up to expectation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when that started happening, people who were mentioning refund in the comments started to get their message deleted automatically. And uh, some of them were saying they were getting banned. Again, this is all in this registrar report. And finally, the cries for refunds got to like a fever pitch. And so Siraj couldn't ignore them anymore. And so at this point, um, Siraj actually mentions that in fact, there was a refund policy that no one had heard about. Um, he ignored us until it blew up last weekend. Uh, one student said, in the midst of all this, he snuck up, up a refund policy saying the refund had to be asked within 14 days of registration and pretended that it was all, there all along, which is ludicrous because there was no refund policy initially. And the policy was posted four weeks after the registration start date. So what does that mean? <laughs> that means that he puts, <laughs> he, he puts the start of registration four weeks ago. And then at four weeks later, he goes, oh, well, you guys should have taking advantage of the 14 day refund policy. And everyone goes, wait, there was no refund policy. He added it after the fact, according to like the page history of where he put the refund policy. And I don't know if he intentionally made it in a time frame where people were literally couldn't get refunds at that point. 
Um, but it seems like he did. And at one point, Sirach in an, an, an email to somebody who says, hey, since we're more than halfway through the course, the refund policy is now ended. However, I'd like to give you a special discount code up to 100% off my next three courses, as if that's going to make people happy. It's, that That's ridiculous. Um, so eventually everyone is st getting even more pissed off because they're like, wait, you didn't give us a refund policy. And wait, you know, this is this is all made up. And in fact, if you do not provide a refund policy at the time of someone buying your thing, there's an automatic 30 day refund policy. So when f finally Siraj gets called out to the point where he can absolutely no longer ignore it. And after he's tried to basically get people to to accept no refund and only accept like, you know, future courses, which is kind of a lame um, thing. If you just spent $200 on a course you hate, why would you want more of Siraj's courses? So finally, he makes this statement on Twitter and he goes, uh, I saw some data. They're unsatisfied. I'd like to apologize. I'm going to send refunds to the students who asked with it one within 30 days of purchase. And a lot of people just saw this as a very um, last minute sort of cop out because he had done everything he could up to that point to not let people get uh, refunds. So that's where a lot of this stopped. And for me, that was like, okay, maybe that's, maybe it was somebody who just did not have an experience with a course. And maybe, uh, you know, this is just a one off kind of thing. But then bigger allegate, I mean, in my opinion, bigger allegations started coming out about Siraj, uh, specifically with Udacity. So apparently, I didn't, I didn't know this, Siraj had a, a course with Udacity. And um, at the meeting, they had to have an intervention with him because he was basically stealing people's code for for his sessions. So one of the things that the registrar accuses him of is basically stealing people's GitHub code, which is kind of a big deal and something that Siraj very strongly says that he doesn't do. Siraj says that he actually credited the author every time in the associated GitHub re uh, readme. Show me a counterexample, which is at this point, I mean, this is just what a... What a show. The guys from Udacity come in and they basically slam dunk him. They go, oh no, not with working with us. We literally had an intervention meeting involving multiple directors, including myself, to explain to you how non-attribution was bad. Even the director of video production was involved. It was so blatant that non-tech had to point it out. So this, so this is pretty serious stuff um, because this is another course that he's getting accused of this with. And uh, it's, anyway, it's just really unfortunate. Um, it sucks. It really does suck. But I started to do some digging and it does not seem to be an isolated case. It doesn't seem to be just with Udacity. It doesn't just seem to be with this course where shady stuff is going on. Um, Siraj's claim that he credits authors is misleading at best. So I want to demonstrate one of those cases for you right now of how Siraj does not properly um, credit people who he takes code from. And he's done, he does this a lot. I mean, basically all, nearly all of his videos are in some way, basically most of the code is taken from other people with very minimal changes. So I'm just going to show you an example of that. So this is Siraj's video, Watch Me Build a Training Bot. Okay. So let's just start this video. First of all, watch me build a trading bot. What does that imply? It implies, okay, I built this thing. I mean, very clearly, I watch as I build. You would think, based on everything here, that he's building this thing. It's Siraj, and I built an automated trading bot. It's I built an automated trading bot, right? I built. I did it. It was me. I built the automated trading bot, right? In this video, I'm going to show you how I built it. How I built it. How I, you know, I built it. Okay, here's the thing. When you actually go to code for this video, first of all, it takes you to his GitHub page, right? This is his GitHub page. It's kind of a long story, but the normal way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to fork and not just clone to an, your own rep, uh, repo with no Git history. But anyway, that's a long story. If you go to his starter code and then scroll all the way to the bottom, this is Siraj's idea of credit. <laughs> Credits. Credits go to Ask Mike for the starter code. I have no idea how much credit actually Mike did because this says starter code, right? Siraj built it. How I built it. Maybe he just built a little bit off of Mike's starter code. Okay, let's go check that out. So what a friend of mine who's way smarter than me did was uh, 
he helped me do this like merge thing where we got the original GitHub code, Ask Mike's GitHub code, and then we got Siraj's GitHub code, which Siraj does not fork or uh, fork from Ask Mike. So Ask Mike probably has no idea that this guy has basically taken his code. It's That's kind of a long story. I'll let someone who's like more computer science explain why that's kind of bad. Um, basically, he's taking credit without real attribution, except in like name only. Um, but basically, this is the difference between the two GitHub pages, right? And here's the here here's the headline. Okay, every time it's there's this arrow like this. This is something that actually gets um, taken out, and anytime there's an arrow like this, it gets put into the code. This these are the only differences. This is out. This is in put back into the code. So basically, he just changes the README. That's all he did. He changes the readme, he deletes the guy's readme, he takes all the guy's code. The starter code is all the code. <laughs> and he takes the guy's readme, deletes all the guy's readme, and puts in his own thing. And, and then he goes, oh yeah, uh, this is the code for this video by Siraj called Watch Me Build a Training Bot. And then he deletes all the other guy's stuff. And at the very bottom, makes this tiny thing and goes, oh yeah, the guy gave me starter code. No, he gave you all the code. He gave you all the code. This is not this is not attribution. Saying saying somebody gave me a a starter script and it's the whole script is not attribution. Saying someone gave starter code, not forking, cloning your own repo, deleting the git history so no one can see what's going on. The le the original author can't see that you linked them. Uh, can't see that you took their code and then just crediting with starter code at the bottom of a second footnoted page from your original video that you call watch me build a training bot how I built it. <sighs> genuinely, genuinely, I like the guy, um, or I like the guy's style of teaching. I think he's a good educator, but this, this kind of behavior is just like, it's, anyway, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, but um, I'm not trying to like dunk on the guy here, but I, I, but I am trying to, as, in, as like a consumer alert thing, um, just be aware of this kind of thing. And it's just a consistent pattern of behavior. I mean, Siraj, you know, he might be excused if he could reasonably claim that he doesn't know how to use GitHub because his GitHub practices are kind of frowned upon. Um, but he literally makes a video called How to Use GitHub, where he explains GitHub and where he explains how to fork, um, how to fork things, how to fork things, but he doesn't do it. And um, Eventually, we maybe find the reason why. GitHub is a social network, and you can follow other developers to keep up to date with their latest code. The more developers that follow you, the more likely developers will contribute to your open source project. Currently, Linus Torvalds is the most followed developer out of 28 million on GitHub, and right now, I'm number 15, so watch out, Linus. I, I think... I think, I, I don't know, this is a little bit speculation. I think that's maybe why Siraj uses GitHub the way he does. I think maybe he's chasing, I don't know, clout is, I don't know if clout's the right word, but um, by not crediting developers properly, he's able to basically gather a following on GitHub who thinks, who reasonably thinks, unless they really do their due diligence, Siraj is the one who made this thing. You would think Siraj made it. I mean, after all, that's starter code. Starter code equals <laughs> changing the readme. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, anyway, there, there's a lot more evidence on here. I'll link some stuff below. Honestly, this is like a very shallow dive into all this stuff. There was this huge Reddit thread about documenting a lot of um, these problems. And if you just look at r slash machine learning, you find a lot of people who are disgruntled because Siraj used their code in a video, um, never credits them pro properly. And, you know, there's anyway, there's all these problems. So I, I think a lot of his problems would be solved if he credited people properly. And if he didn't try to mislead people about return policies and how many students were going to be in his course, like all of this seems to be of Siraj's own making. When in reality, he has a great platform. He's a good educator. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know why he's doing this. So that's the video. Sorry guys, sorry it's not so fun and exciting today. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bummed out, but at the same time, I wanted to let you guys know what's going on in the community. And obviously, Siraj walked into the fake guru house and unfortunately, you can't walk in without getting a CoffeeZilla video made about you. That's just the way it is. 
Uh, yeah. So that's it.